channel the channel hello welcome back to the channel in this video i'll show you how you can create a boat game in gdevelop 5 so before we begin let's have a preview of what our game should look like so preview and here we have a boat game where the goal as the player is to dodge as much on rocks in the ocean as possible it's an endless game by the way and once the rocks are um, outside the screen it adds a point right there as you can see 17 and 18 and we also have a screen wrap feature in the game which lets you teleport from one end of the screen to the other so that's what we would be creating in this video Before the events, let's go through what we have in the scene right now. In the object, we have a boat. So the boat has a sprite with three animations. We have animation one, which animation zero, sorry, which is a straight um, facing upwards. We have this animation one, which is the right, and we have the animation two as the left. This object has no behavior, so we'll apply this. And next up, we have rock two. So rock two is also an object. It has no behavior. Also, it's a sprite. It has only one animation with one frame in it. So apply and we have the summer tower water, which is this large area of um, water. It is a towed sprite. Here we go. And we can go ahead and apply this. And, and the final object we have is the score. This is a text object, which what we use to display the player's score. So apply this and let's head into our events. Now in our event, the first thing we need to do is handle um, the key press, which is moving to the right and moving to the left. So let's start off with the right. Add a new event, add a condition. Let's check for a key press. So key is pressed. The key we'll be checking for is the right key. Okay, and once this key is pressed, we need to change the animation. So change the animation of our boat sign set to and the value will be setting it to 1 as this is the right and add new events at a condition let's go um a key pressed and the key we're looking for here is the left key once this is true add an action to change the animation change the animation of the object boat sign set to value 2 okay let's preview this And here we have our player moving to the right and to the left. There we go. Now we need to add a force to our player. Close this and add an action. Select boat and let's search up force. And add a force. We're moving on the X axis. So we'd add a force of um, 200 on the X. On the Y axis, set that to zero. And it would be an instance force. Okay. Next up, once left, and in our second event, once left key is pressed, such our boat and the force will be adding. Uh, the force on the x-axis will move into the left, so it would add a negative 200 on the y-axis, 0, and it would also be an instance force. We can go ahead and preview this. And we have our boat moving to the right and to the left. So once these two keys are not pressed, we need it to return back to its um, idle animation, which is it's facing upwards so to do that we can add a new event and copy this copy the left and copy the right into that new event as a condition and invert them both invert and invert so once this is true add an action both animation change the animation sign set to the animation um, zero we can preview this again and here we go so once these keys are not pressed, it goes back to the idle animation. Now let's add a force to our rock. Close this and let's add a new event, add an action. And you need to select rock and search up force. So add a force and in this case we're moving on the y axis. So we'll set this on the y axis to 200. And on the x axis you set that to 0. It would be an instance force as the force will only push the object during a time of one frame typically used in an event with no condition just like the one we are creating right now and with this you can also preview and that should add a force to the rock great 
Now we need to spawn multiple rocks, so to do that, close, add new, events, add an action, and let's search up rock, and create the object. So we'd create the object rock on the X position, we would set a random in range, it's random in range, and the value we have on this side is the minimum value, while um, the value after the comma is the maximum value. So for our maximum value, we'd get our scene window um, width. That would be our maximum value. On the, the x-axis, we want it to spawn in would be um, negative 30, which is outside the screen. And okay, so what this does basically is is create this object in a random position with the limits of 10 as the minimum value and the scene window width as the maximum value. Now let's create a timer to execute this action. So add a condition and timer. Our timer would be a scene timer and the timer's name would be rock time. And the sign to test would be greater than the time in seconds. This would be random in range. Once again, the minimum value set this to 1 and the maximum value will set that to 3. Okay, and once this is true, we also need to restart this um, timer we created here. So add an action and let's go timer. Rest not an object timer, but rather a scene timer. So start or reset a scene timer. The timer's name is rock timer. And okay. Let's not forget to start our timer at the beginning of the scene. So add a new empty event, add a condition, and at the beginning of the scene. Okay, let's um, copy our timer, reset the timer. So this should start or reset the timer. We can go ahead and preview this. Um, for some reason, it's not working. Okay, so we have a problem. The problem is from the name we have here. It's rock um, time, not timer. So reset change this to rock time now we can go ahead and preview this and we have our boat and the rocks are spawning good now let's work with our score here so the best way to go about the score is let's add a new empty event let's add a condition and let's check the position of this um, rock too so search up the position y position and once this is greater than the scene window height that's the function we need to go ahead add an action and first of all let's delete the rock once it's outside the screen we don't need it anymore so we need to delete it and prevent our game from lagging so add an action next let's um, go ahead and create a scene variable value of a scene variable now this would be our score so we'd add one to it once it deletes the rock, it also adds one to our variable and add an event, add an action, select your text and modify the text, sign set to to the value of our scene, sorry, to the value of our variable string, which is the variable we just created here, um, score. So it would modify the text and set it to our score. Now let's go ahead and preview this. And we have our rock. So once the rocks um, are outside the screen, it keeps on adding the values right there. Now let's handle the game over, which is when our boat is in collision with the rocks. We can close this and add a new event, add a condition. And boat is in collision with the rock. Okay, let's add an action and... Here we can choose to create a new scene which would be our game over scene but in this game our game over would be in this exact scene. So let's go ahead and set our time frame. And let's go ahead and change the layer's time scale. For the layer it would be the base layer and we'll set this to zero. So this should um, pause the scene. And let's also have a text to display the current score. So add new object, add a text and this would call this um, final score. We'll set this to zero and it will be bold and the size of um, 40. Okay, let's also place this on a different layer. So, place this here and add a new layer. We'll name this um, game over and we'll place our final score text on the game over layer. Game over. 
So while this game is running, we don't need the game over layer to be visible. So we can go ahead and hide that layer and back into our events. Once boats is in collision with rock 2, add an action. We need to show a layer and the layer is the game over layer. So we'll show this layer and go ahead, add new events. Add an action. Let's select our final score text, modify the text, sign, set. So now we're going to get our variable, which is our score variable score variable and there we go score so this should also set our final score text to what we have in our score variable so let's add a text before our score to do that you can go ahead and add in double quotes right there and add a plus sign right there so our text should be here which is in this case is a string so we can go ahead and add um, final score and it should show this Let's also add a colon right there. Space and OK. So with this, you can go ahead and preview. And once our player is in collision with a rock, it shows our text final score. And but here we have a problem. The rocks are still respawning even if the game is over. We can handle this by ensuring that our game over layer is not visible. So in the condition that creates the rock to objects, we can add another condition and we can check for a layer. So visibility of a layer, game over layer. And test if this layer is visible, we need to invert this to ensure this layer is not visible. Now once we're in collision, it should stop creating um, the rocks. And there we go, it creates our text final score. So there you go, that's how to create a boat game in Jdevelop 5. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I'll see you guys in my next tutorial.